recommend use the forecast £450,000 revenue savings to increase the firefighter recruitment reserve in light of the expected firefighter retirement over the coming years. The proposed updated financial plan, item 6 on today's agenda, provides members with an update on reserves and the proposed future use. Paragraph 17 to 22 on pages 28 to 31 confirm the Treasury Management Strategy performance as we made consistent with the approved strategy. The authority had £30 million of investments as of the 31st of 12, 2016, reflecting unapplied government capital grants, the level of authority reserves, and firefighters pension grant held by the authority at that time. However, these funds will, will be required to meet future committed expenditure. No new loans have been taken out in the year so far or are expected to be taken out in the remainder of the year. Members are asked to approve the utilisation of £450,000 revenue savings to increase the firefighter recruitment reserve. I'm happy to take any questions on the report. Thank you. 
term financial plan uh, aligns to our asset and transport asset and flesh. In regards to that function, we, we look at issues such as the design and procure, procurement of fleet vehicles, fleet management itself, fleet maintenance, engineering and technical support, and then ultimately vehicle disposal, which are all contained within the asset management plans. These three plans are brought together, but we've got all of those assets that we hold as an authority and are managed over a five year period so we ensure that they are all fit for payments and that allows us to deliver the best possible outcomes for our communities. I'll say no further and uh, I'll open up to questions. Good. Good. Any questions? to all the financial assumptions remaining robust, the proposed financial plan will deliver a balanced financial position up to and including 2021 with only a small saving requirements of 0.1 million in 2021-22 that will be considered in future budget plans. The report sets out in paragraphs 51 to 71, pages 143 to 148, the proposed five-year capital programme and prevention borrowing requirements. As per the table on page 144, the total capital programme provides for investments of just over £35 million, of which £20 million is being funded by potential borrowers. New schemes totaling £3.4 million have been added to the current capital programme, but most of the interest relates to the addition of the rolling extra year 2021-22. Paragraph 72 to 82, <coughs> pages 149 to 151, outline how the minimum revenue provision, which is the sum that will be set aside each year to repay outstanding historic and future debt associated with capital expenditure, will be calculated. Paragraphs 83 to 92, pages 152 to 154, outline the impact of the proposed capital investment over a number of predetermined potential indicators to determine if it's affordable Paragraphs 93 to 95, pages 153 to 163, outline the authority's treasury management strategy. The proposed investment strategy is consistent with the current strategy and recommends continuing with the current institutional limit and minimum credit ratings. The proposed authorised limit for debt, £58 million for borrowing, will ensure the total gross debt does not exceed the capital financing requirements and that borrowing is only incurred Sections I've just outlined consider all the costs associated with the proposed five-year capital program and potential borrowing. These costs have been built into the proposed medium-term financial plan, and therefore the proposed capital program and associated borrowing is deemed to be sustainable and affordable. As outlined on page 164, paragraph 99, at last year's budget authority meeting, members approved 
11 million pounds of savings and efficiency that delivered a balanced plan up to 2019-20. Therefore, in theory, if all the assumptions in last year's plan remain consistent, then the authority would simply need to ratify last year's plan to set a balanced budget for 2017-18 and consider if it wished to extend the current financial plan beyond 2019-20. Paragraphs 100 to 111, pages 164 to 170, outline for members the new cost pressures or changes to the 2016-17 approved plan that require a 2.8 million pounds of additional deficiencies to be identified by 2019-20, rising to 4.4 million by 21-22. The table on page 169 summarises these changes. <coughs> Section H on pages 171 to 177 identifies possible saving options for the authority to consider in order to deliver the required savings to rebalance the proposed plan while a small outstanding saving requires 0.1 million in 21 22. That will be considered a future budget authority meeting. The new saving proposals are summarised at the bottom of the table on page 177 and reflect the proposals discussed. Budget Strategy Day in January. Pages 178 to 181 identify the anticipated reserves over the financial plan period and recommend the authority maintain a general fund reserve at the current level of £2 million. And finally, pages 182 to 183 identifies that £26.8 million needs to be raised from the council tax preset in 2017-18 the balance of the revenue budget, and that equates to a band D council tax preset demand of £74.34, an increase of 1.99% on the 2016-17 figure of £72.89. Members are asked to approve the report recommendations to A through to 2J. I'm happy to take any questions on the report. Okay, thanks. thanks We've just asked the Chief Council of Attention, please, to uh, paragraph 128 through to 133, which is on pages 175 to 176. Uh, also, reference to your budget resolution, uh, points number 4, 5, and 6. So, just to, um, at the risk of repeating some of what I've said, <coughs> the £11 million savings uh, target remains to be delivered we need to, uh, to approve a budget that uh, delivers a balanced financial plan. What officers have uh, managed to do is uh, what initially would have been £4 million of savings to be delivered from operational response. That's, we've managed to reduce that down to £1.9 so we've over half that. That said, it uh, will still require the loss of 49 firefighter posts, which uh, translates through to an impact on operational response of five fan, uh, appliances moving from being crewed 24-7 on whole time response to a 12-hour whole time response during the day and the same cover overnight on a 30 minute recall. So just wanted to I won't speak in detail at this juncture in relation to the, the operational implications and I cover that on the, the IRMP unless members particularly uh, particularly want me to speak to that in detail now. I feel that it's important and I need to set that out to members so you understand the, the structural changes that would arise from setting or, or agreeing the budget and for the assumptions that were made as to how we would deliver those savings the structural changes that would follow, accepting that you would still have to approve the IRMP, which, as the Chair says, is uh, directly interrelated to this, but is a decision that you need to take separately. So I'll pause at that point, Chair, and I'd like to take any questions. Okay, we'll answer your questions. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Well, I do support the budget, but I have to say, as a member of your authority, I am just.
disappointed that we're being paid before into using firefighter pumps and support service pumps. We're not doing that because it's sound logic and because we realise we've got too many staff. But it appears to me that we're being driven down this road purely uh, as a result of savage government cuts. So I am disappointed that we're having to do that. But I would seek an assurance, Chair, through you that everybody will do whatever they can as far as possible to ensure that at least we don't have to resort to any compulsory redundancies. I would like to think mm. that even if we do have to reduce posts, it can be done through natural way to draw whatever. So I would seek that assurance through you, Chair. But I do support the budget. But as I say, I am disappointed that we're being forced into this tough position because of the government cuts. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that assurance because we have each year uh, tried to do all we can to avoid any compulsory redundancies. That's across the whole of the service. And uh, uh, we state that within the, the report itself, is that we're going to then we'll do all we possibly can uh, with, with all our departments and all our deaf bodies to ensure that we do everything possible to, uh, to alleviate any compulsory redundancies. Because if any of the symptoms are not, as you quite rightly say, everybody's up in the cost, everybody's up under the shoulder. Um, nobody came into public service, nobody came in this side or this side to preside over the managed decline of aid service. And effectively, in, in our local authorities and in our other public service here, we are trying to make the best of uh, reducing uh, circumstances, reducing budgets. And uh, I want to thank, and I'm sure that you will do so, too, thank our staff, our firefighters, those members who are fire stoppers, who are working to the, uh, the aim and objective of keeping the public safe. The, the, the question was often being asked, where is the red line? And we often say the red line is a couple of years behind us. We would not want to be where we are now. Firefighters are faced with fewer numbers and tougher, more difficult uh, and complex levels of work. We thank them and all of our staff, everyone that we employ, and those who volunteer.
volunteers that we have as well, and the cadets that we have these days, for all that they do to contribute to keeping the county and the public in the <coughs> Yeah. 
this issue today about things to be addressed. There's a lot of lobbying that needs to be undertaken. We will continue with that lobbying the best that we possibly can, and we'll deal with all and anybody who wishes to join us. But just as at the budget, as it's quite rightly said, it's a three-year budget, six is up to 2020. Um, we're looking at 11 million savings overall, and a break, breakdown there from 9.1 million in management support across the technical savings, and the 1.9 million of the, the operational response. It also says about we will freeze member silence for the ninth consecutive year. The council tax increase will be just below 2%. Uh, we've already um, spoken with the planning authority, with the leaders of the district councils, who understand the reasons of why we need to do this. It's a shame that we don't have the flexibility to, um, to increase our council tax, similar to what other comments to me, but they're, they're in the round of the IR and the budget impact on the IR and three. So uh, the, the consent to bring me in when you discuss the IR and three, I'll reserve the comments for that. Members consider the outcomes of the 12 week public consultation on IRMP 2017 through 20 and approve the version which is attached on Appendix 1 of the report for publication. Before I speak in more detail on the IRMP itself and the consultation responses, members, can I just draw your attention please, to the recommendations which are in paragraph 2 <coughs> on page 200 which are that you consider whether the responses to the consultation have been adequately considered and reflected within the IRMP. Uh, that you note that the IRMP continues to reflect the challenge of budget position that the authority faces. That you reaffirm your commitment to ensuring that the impact of the changes on the communities and nursing side should be minimised and firefighter safety maximised. To note that there are areas of the IRMP that do have a direct impact on our staff and in line with all staff and matters, the IRMP has been the subject of additional staff consultation and, then, uh, and negotiation where that may be required. If you note that the proposals within the IRMP have been subject to extensive public consultation and the outcomes of those consultations are attached as appendices to the report and then finally to approve the publication of IRMP 2017-20, which will take effect on the 1st of April 2017. Just to recall members that you approved the draft IRMP on the 20th of October and that was subject to the outcomes of the 12-week consultation process. The full detail of that process is set out with an appendices 2 through to 11 <coughs> with a summary provided within the covering report at paragraphs 11 to 37, which runs from pages 206 to 211. So the extent of the consultation process itself is set out at paragraph 11 
which is on pages 206 and runs over onto the top of page 207. The summary of the outcomes of the three forum events, which are facilitated by Opinion Research Services, and they were held at Birkenhead, Bootle, Netherton, and Bell Vale, is set out at paragraphs 12 through to 17, which is on page 207. And if I can just draw your attention to paragraph 17, because I'll, I'll return to that at the, uh, when I finish speaking to the report, just to point out that in general, the public consultation has been supportive of the proposals contained within the IRMP, primarily because there is this understanding now from the, the public consultation that the, the reason that we are having to make these changes is as a direct result of the financial challenges that the authority faces and that believe that the public, uh, public consultation shows that there is a general reassurance of the fact that we are doing all we can to ensure that these options have the least worst impact on uh, the delivery of our, of, uh, of our service. A summary of the outcomes of the online questionnaire is set out in paragraphs uh, 18, which is on the, it's at the top of page 208. And if we can just draw out there some of the, uh, you get a summary there of the responses. So the majority of the respondents, just under 70%, felt that the response proposals were very reasonable, and 26% felt that they were fairly reasonable. So almost unanimous in terms of the, 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 the reasonableness of the, of the proposals, again, recognising that uh, these are not recommendations certainly I would be making if it were not for the fact that we simply don't have any other choice because of the financial challenge. Similarly, around preparedness uh, proposals, reasonable by, uh, considered very reasonable by just under 70% and similar figures for the prevention and protection proposals and there's some comments there which are in italics I won't read them out but they, uh, they said to make the point that the way in which the RRP was presented was easy for the, the lay person to, to understand. A summary of the outcomes of the consultation with that body is just set out at paragraphs 19 through to 35 which is on pages 208 through to 211 and I won't comment any further than that because the chair will give uh, our colleagues from the black bodies the, the opportunity to comment for themselves once I've finished speaking to the, uh, the report. A summary of responses from partners is set out in paragraphs 36 and 37 on uh, page <coughs> 11 again, I won't speak to that, you can be in, in italics as a such as uh, is it an extract from the, the response to the Chief Fire Officer of uh, Cheshire, which is also captured at Appendix 6. I think in summary, members, I believe it would be fair to say that the summary of the outcomes of the public forums is broadly reflective of the overall outcome of the consultation process, which is that respondents are supportive of the proposals as they understand that they're being driven by budget cuts and therefore represent the least worst options. Just to point out members, the amendments that we've made in response are set out at Appendix 11 on page 337 and that shows where we've made amendments to the, the content of the IRMP as a direct consequence of the responses that we've, uh, that we've received. Before I pause to take questions, I'll just make one final point. It is fair to say that I do not agree with Sir Ken Knight on, uh, on many issues. This is a great surprise to the members, I can see that. But one issue that I do agree with Ken Knight on is that fire and rescue authorities do indeed resource the budget and not to risk. And this IRMP members is evidence of that. The substantive response proposals are to change the clearing and entry, Crosby, Kensington, Liverpool City and Wallasey from 24-7 whole time to 12-hour whole time day shifts followed by overnight retained cover on a 30-minute response. Now, if this were a truly risk-based integrated risk management plan, there is no prospect that I would be recommending that to you as, uh, 
in essence, what that's saying is we are effectively removing five fire appliances from immediate response overnight. As I say, members, and for the avoidance of any doubt, there is no prospect I would recommend that to you or suggest for one second that that is going to improve the service because it isn't. It clearly isn't going to do that. now well aware of the operational rationale for the proposal, so I won't revisit that at this juncture. What it does do, I think, is serve to reinforce the point that I started on, which is why I felt it was important to once again make that point. This is not something I would be recommending to you as your professional advisor if it were not for the fact that the financial situation dictates that we have to do this. What, what I will say is that these are the least worst options that I can set in front of you for you to improve. But again, I do not want in any sense for anyone to think that this is going to represent an improvement in the service, because it won't. I'll pause at that point, Chair. Yeah.